What's up people, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So for today, I'm gonna talk about why I avoid playing line dances like the coronavirus. It's the great line dance debate. Every DJ has a pretty strong opinion on this, and I certainly do. Every once in a while, I throw a little comment out there on Facebook, a little meme or something, rouse up the community. You know, you got your people that hate line dances, you got your people that are all about it, and then they clash, and I'm sitting there with my popcorn having a great ass time. I mean, it's a great debate, it really is, but I do have a very, very strong opinion, and I wanna say that, like, my opinion comes from a good place. You see, a lot of people think that I just jumped into the DJ game, I'm a young punk kid, and right off the bat, oh, line dances are corny, I'll never do line dances. I'll never be an entertainer. I'm just like a DJ, whatever. That's not the case, people. That's not the case. You see, 15 years ago, when I was 15 years old, I was an entertainer. That's all I knew how to do. I didn't even beat mix. I didn't know beat mixing existed. I had no idea. All I knew how to do was fade one song in and out, and I got out there and I taught some dances. Not just line dances either. I had a dance for songs that Shouldn't even have a dance to. Like, like, get down tonight or blame it on the boogie. Do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. That was me every weekend. Every weekend, teaching them line dances, having a time of my life. I loved it. I had a great time. I was that DJ. I could crush the electric slide to this day. Crush it without even thinking. I even do the electric slide with like the twirls in the middle. You know, like the advanced electric sliders that do the little twirls in between. That's me. Okay, that's me. But I came to a realization one day that these line dances are slowly just not working in the same way they used to. That slowly more and more people are kind of looking at me funny when I play them. So I started asking around. And what I realized is that these line dances are getting played out just like a song on the radio. Let me ask you something. If you go and see a comedian do a live stand-up show, right? They do their whole act, you love it. You go see them six months later, and they happen to have that same exact stand-up show. The same exact one. You know every punchline. You'll do a pity laugh, right? You'll laugh along, right? It'll still be a good time, you got to see him. You might have forgot about one joke. Oh yeah, that was pretty funny. But you pretty much knew every punchline, right? Is it as fun? No, it's not. That's what happened to line dances. So I'm not gonna go on a rant here. I'm gonna be structured, okay? I'm gonna give you the reasons why I avoid them at all costs, and I'm also gonna give you the reasons why I would play them. So the first reason why I avoid line dances like the coronavirus is people judge you. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, who cares what people think, right? Because I am one of those people. I don't care what people think. I really don't. I, it doesn't matter to me. Obviously, if I cared, I wouldn't be putting out these videos. You know how many hate tweets I get? Hmm? You know how many hate emails I get from you guys sometimes? Just talking mad shit. You gotta not care putting yourself out there, right? So I I'm on that train of thought. But when it comes to my events and what I do and my brand, that is something I really, really care about. And playing line dances for me started to kind of hurt the brand. I started to get put in that box as that, oh, I'm just a wedding DJ and he oh, does the corny line dances and that's it. Once line dances started becoming corny, more and more people started looking at me kind of sideways when I would play them. And it got to the point where I realized that no matter what, every single time I played a line dance, I turned at least one person off in a room. At least one. Most of the time, more than that. Maybe 10, maybe 15. Maybe 50 people were turned off. But at least one. At least one person in that ballroom was turned off when I played that line dance and I got out there. And I thought, if I do like 100 events a year, that's a lot of people that I'm just turning off at every single event. A lot of people that are just like, ugh. <sighs> this guy's just like everybody else, you know, and associate my name with that. So it became not worth it. The second reason why I stopped is every single couple I meet with doesn't want them. It's like th the most rare thing in the world for a couple to actually say, hey, you really gotta play a line dance. It became so rare and it became just evident that like they do not want that. It was the number one thing on everybody's do not play list to this day for the last three, four, five years. Do not play line dances, do not play line dances, do not play line dances. So the last thing I'm gonna do is try and talk them into, oh, well, you know, you really should. You, you really should though. I mean, it really helps get the crowd going, you know? Like more and more couples were just against it or they were just like, if you, if you 
you have to play one. Like, you know what I mean? They weren't about it. So that told me like, holy shit, I, I need to, I need, I need a new stick. I need to like figure it out. You know, I need to, I need to get off this, these training wheels. I need to stop relying on line dances to have a good party, you know? And that brings me to my third reason. And that is, I don't need them. <laughs> You don't need line dances to have a good party. Generally speaking, people come to weddings, people come to events to have a good time, to have a drink, to let loose, to dance. If you program the right way, if your timing's correct, if you're a decent mixer, People will dance and have a great time. You don't have to get out there and teach a dance and use some kind of gimmick to trick people on the dance floor. People will dance. It's in our human nature. It's not necessary anymore. And if you're sitting over there saying, oh, well, Nick, I, I get to showcase my MC skills. Showcase them during the intros. Showcase them during any formalities. Like, that's, that's your time to MC. Now, just with anything in human evolution, usually when something goes out, something has to replace it right? So what's going to replace line dancing? What is replacing line dancing right now? And that is, in my opinion, beat mixing. Being a good mixer is replacing that. Years ago, no one cared. No one was aware. No one was dialed into that sort of thing. They, they really didn't know what mixing was. Few people did. Few people appreciated. it. Nowadays, it's like the standard. Every DJ beat mixes. Every DJ can blend songs together and really work a room. So like the 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 bar is set so high that like everywhere you go, there's a good DJ. So growing up at school dances, the kids are seeing a good DJ. When they get older and they turn 21, they go to the club or they go to a regular bar, like a hipster bar with craft beer. There's still a good DJ there, probably playing all vinyl. So I've been saying this for years and it's been coming more and more true every single year. Mixing now is more important than ever. If you do not know how to beat mix, you've been DJing for 30 years and you just do your thing, I have to urge you, you, you gotta, I know old dogs can't learn new tricks. But yes, you can learn how to beat mix. It, it's an incredible tool and it's something that's literally a standard nowadays in most markets. It's literally a standard and that's what replaced line dancing. But anyway, I will say I do sometimes play line dances. Uh, it's very, very rare though because I avoid them at all costs, but there's only certain situations situations where I'll play them. Well, one situation. And that one situation is when the couple specifically ask me for a line dance. When they say, right, because I mostly do weddings. So whoever pays me says, Nick, you have to play this line dance. My mom loves it or my family, whatever. Whatever the reason is, you just have to play this. Please make sure you play this. No problem. And I'll play it. And if it's a shit show out there and they don't know what they're doing, then I'll grab the mic and I'll go teach it. If I play it and they're pros and they jump right in there, then no, you don't need to hear my voice over it. You know, left, left, left. Like, that's annoying. Like, I, I don't want, like, you don't, no. Okay, I'm gonna stay out of it unless it's super needed. If it's a complete shit show, I jump in. But that's seriously the only situation where I'll ever play a line dance. Like, so it's literally only if they specifically request it, tell me why, there's a story, like, you, you have to make sure you play this. Of course, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play whatever the people tell me to play. I'm a hired help at the end of the day. I don't care if it's R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, Chick and dance, electric slide, boogie woogie, I don't give a shit what it is. I'm gonna play it if the client wants me to play it, okay? I mean, at the end of the day, I work for you. I don't care, you know? But I avoid it at all costs, and I really think you should too. So thank you for watching this video. If you disagree with me or agree or whatever, leave some comments, let me know what you think. I'm really interested in what you have to say. As always, please make sure you subscribe and hit that like button too. It'll kind of help my algorithm so more people can see this and stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.